Good morning students and welcome to my YouTube channel. In the previous class we have discussed about the tissues and we have known the definition of the tissue. We told about the different kinds of tissues, the plant tissues and the animal tissues. We also told you that uh, how the tissues are formed and what is the importance of tissue formation. That is the division of labor. And we also differentiated the plant tissues, why they are different from the animal tissues. So today, the next part we will, we will be discussing and it is about the plant tissues. We will go in details about the different kinds of plant tissues, their structure, location and the functions. Okay. So basically, the plant tissues, they are the tissues which are present definitely in the plant bodies. Okay. So they are categorically divided into two groups. The first one is the meristematic tissues and the second one are the permanent tissues. Okay. The meristematic tissues are those tissues in which the cells are continuously in a dividing state. Okay. Meristematic in which the cells are continuously in a dividing state and permanent the cells are incapable to divide. Okay. They have lost their ability to divide. So that is why they are named so. Permanent means they will not be able to divide anymore. And meristem, it is a Greek word. The word meristematic it comes from Greek origin. Greek may meristos ka matlab hota hai to divide. Okay. That is why it is named as meristematic tissue. So let us go to the details about first the meristematic tissue. So the meristematic tissues are the tissues in which the cells are continuously dividing as I said meristos means to divide. The plant tissues, they are responsible for the growth and development of the plants. As you know the cells divide to form different kinds of structures like the tissues, organs and organ systems. So in plant tissues basically they are responsible for plant growth. Okay, There will be two kinds of growth in plants, primary and secondary. Okay, the primary growth involves the lengthening of the plant. Lengthening means increasing the length of the plant, increasing the size. Okay, and the secondary growth will help in increasing the girth of the plant. Usually, when a new plant comes or when a new plant is germinating from a seed, the stem is very very thin, but it grows laterally into a bigger stem, a thicker stem. That is due to the secondary growth okay so primary growth and secondary growth two types of growth are required in the plants and that is why there are different kinds of meristematic tissues okay first of all let us discuss in detail the structure of meristematic tissue okay i am briefing here you must note it in a full form okay meristematic pura likhna okay so the structure first of all the cells of this tissues are immature undifferentiated Immature and undifferentiated. Okay, why being immature and undifferentiated? As I mentioned earlier, that the cells of meristematic tissues are continuously in a dividing state. Okay, so when they are continuously dividing, new cells are continuously formed, and there will be smaller cells, so which will not be mature enough. Okay, so that's why always the cells of meristematic tissues are immature and undifferentiated. A cell which is differentiated knows its functions and its location. Usko kaha pe jana hai, kya karna hai, us cell ko pata hota hai. But this meristematic cells are still dividing. So they don't know their differentiation. Okay. They are undifferentiated. Next point. They are isodiametric. Isodiametric means they are all of the same diameter. They are all of the same size. Okay. And next they are same. They may be oval or rectangular in shape okay there could be various many types of cells but most probably they are oval or rectangular okay next point in this type of cells in this type of tissue the cells are very closely packed okay there will be very minimal intercellular space. The cells are very closely packed together. Very minimal intercellular space is there. Okay. 
Next, they are very very active. Since they are continuously dividing and forming new cells, it indicates that they are very very active. Okay, their division is continuously going on. Their functions are continuously going on. Okay, and the cells here have dense cytoplasm. They will have a huge mass of cytoplasm within them. Okay, and they will have a large nucleus. Dense cytoplasm and a large nucleus is present in this kind of cells. The cells which are present in the metastomatic tissues. Okay. Next, they have the thin cell walls. We all know that the plant cells they have the cell walls. The animal cells do not have the cell walls. So in the tissues of the plant cells there will be cell walls, and this uh, in this particular metastomatic tissues the cell wall is very very thin. Okay. And there will be vacuoles. Vacuoles may be small. Very small vacuoles are seen here in this kind of uh, cells because you know the plant cells have a bigger or larger vacuole, but these are dividing cells. These are just now forming new cells. That's why the vacuoles will be here smaller. Okay. Now the metastomatic tissues. These are the various kind of points that we can mention in the structure of metastomatic tissue. Now let us move to the types. How the metastomatic tissues are classified. I hope everybody is noting. Okay, all the points should be noted in your copies. The classification of metastomatic tissue. Firstly, apical. Then intercalary and lateral. These are the three types of metastomatic tissues, and these are based on the location in the plants wherever these tissues are located on the basis of location these are divided into apical intercalary and lateral okay here also you can be guessing from the name also where the location could be apical which means they will be present in the apex parts okay intercalary which means they will be present in the nodes or at the node regions okay and lateral means they will be present at the lateral marks okay out of the three the apical and intercalary they help in the lengthening of the plant they help in increasing the growth increasing the size of the plant and the lateral meristem that helps in increasing the girth of the plant stem okay so let's go in detail about the this three types of meristematic tissues here we can draw a diagram to indicate the location of the three tissues okay A very simple and basic diagram is there. Okay, this is a growing root tip or say root tip, any kind of tip. Okay, this is the growing root tip or root tip of a plant, and at the apex region, at this very region, this particular region, there will be the apical type of meristem. Okay. Apical type of meristem will be there within the nodes and internodes. Nodes and internodes are those region in the plant from where new plant parts arise. As you can see, it is branching from here, which means here the nodes and internodes parts are there. Okay, at these regions we can see the intercalary meristem, the second type. Okay, and within the lateral regions, okay, at the tip part or at the lateral parts we can see the lateral. Meristem, okay, lateral meristem, which helps in increasing the girth, which helps in increasing the girth of the stem. Okay, so let us go in details about apical meristem. The apical meristem they are located at the shoot and root apex. Okay, apex means the tips. They are located at the shoot and root apex, and uh, also at the lateral tips. From where new cells will arise, new cells will develop, and the length of the plant will be increased. Okay. Second thing we have to mention here that the cells are arranged in one or more than one layers. Okay. These cells are arranged in one or more than one layers. Okay. The cells may be big or small in size because they are dividing. They will increase the size, so they may grow afterwards, and they can increase the size. Okay. The lateral meristem. This is present in the sides or lateral parts, as mentioned. Okay, 
of the stem and the root and that's why it is called lateral meristem and the cells of these are usually rectangular shaped in lateral meristem the cells are rectangular in shape okay and these cells are present in the sides of roots and stems okay and the intercalary meristem it is present in the plant body in between the other cells or in between the nodes and internodes lesion okay from where new plant parts can arise okay leaves ke node ho gaye stem ke node ho gaye jahan se naye plant parts nikalte hain us jagah pe intercalary meristem milta hai okay <coughs> so according to the location these are three types let us move to the functions of the meristematic tissue overall okay as i have already told you the basic functions the apical meristem it helps in increasing the length of the plant it helps in the primary growth of the plant first apical it will helps in the primary growth okay primary growth of the plants it increases the height of the plant primary growth means increasing the height okay it helps in increase the height the intercalary meristem it also helps in increasing the height of the plant from the growing tips jahan se naye naye plant parts grow ho rahe wahan se okay it also helps in increasing the height and lastly the lateral meristem the lateral meristem helps in increasing the thickness or the girth of the plant okay so these are the three different kinds of meristematic tissues okay in the next part we will be going through the permanent tissues and their types and till then this much and i hope there will be no doubts if any doubts arise you can contact me directly or you can message me okay this much thank you so much